Hey everybody, I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. In this video, I'm going to show you 11 drilling tips and tricks and a handful of drilling mistakes to avoid as well. Now, there are way more than 11 tips when it comes to drilling and drill bits, so I'll probably do a follow-up video on the topic later, but these are the 11 that I think are most important. Also, two quick things to consider. Pre-drilling is always a good idea before you drive a fastener. Pre-drilling removes some wood and gives the screw some room to enter the material. This prevents splitting and makes driving the fastener easier. Also, I'm only using an electric hand drill in this video, not a drill press. But a good number of these tips can apply to a drill press, and they'll even help if you have to drive a screw by hand, so keep that in mind. Alright, let's get going. Tip number one, start with a punch. Drill bits have a tendency to wander when they're getting started. This is because of their spinning motion and the shape of the drill tip. So in any situation where I need a very precise hole placement, I start by punching the hole location. You can do this with an awl, a nail set, or even just a sharp trim nail. I'll typically mark the exact location with a pencil, then place the tip of my punch right there and give it a little tap. This creates a perfect place for the drill bit to bite in and get started without wandering. Tip number two, don't use too much force. Drill bits, like saws, should really be able to do their job without too much force. The bit is designed to cut its way through the material. You just need to apply constant pressure. Skinny bits in particular should never be forced because they break easily. If a drill is really fighting you, it's probably a sign that the bit is dull. Think about changing it out. Or think about trying the next couple tricks. Tip number three, clear out the swarf. Drill bits are designed to remove wood while boring a hole. The tip initiates the cut, then the flutes of a twist bit give the wood a channel to exit through. This waste wood is called swarf. It's one of those cool old fashioned trade labor words. The problem is the drill bit can't always clear swarf when the bit is embedded. The bit basically becomes a smooth cylinder and it can't cut effectively. You need to back the drill bit out periodically to remove the waste wood. Sometimes if the wood is wet or really sappy, you may even need to push the swarf out with a knife or your fingernail. But when the swarf is clear, the bit will drill much more effectively. So be sure to back the drill out often and make sure that the flutes are clear. Tip number four, step up sizes. Another reason drilling may be difficult is that you're trying to drill too big of a hole too quickly. Larger drill bits have more surface area and more material to clear. The drill is going to have to work harder to do this and it often makes a mess of the wood in the process. You can kill two birds with one stone by starting with narrower drill bits and working your way up in diameter. This makes drilling each pass easier, and it also prevents your wood grain from tearing out due to excessive friction. For holes of a quarter inch in diameter or more, I'll often cycle up through two or three different drill bits. And hardwoods in particular will require more bit sizes since they're so much denser. The next two tips further explain how to avoid tear out when you're drilling. Tip number five, use tape to prevent splintering. Just the cutting action of a drill bit spinning can tear up wood grain and cause unsightly scarring. This tends to be even worse in softwoods like pine. If the appearance of your material matters, put a piece of painter's tape over the place where you're planning to drill. Then you can mark your location on the tape and drill through it. The tape adhesive will stabilize the wood grain beneath and prevent the drill bit from doing too much damage as it bores its way through the wood. When the drilling is done, you can just pull the tape off. But speed also plays an important part in controlling tear out. Tip number six, use high speeds for drilling wood. See, wood is a relatively soft, brittle material. The flutes of a drill bit can act as pawls that rip at wood grain when the bit is moving too slowly. When this happens, the bit is sort of plowing its way through the material. You really want the bit to spin fast, so fast that the flutes don't have time to grab much wood grain. Instead, the flutes break off wood in micro bits that come away more easily. So high speeds will give you a much cleaner hole when drilling wood, but that's not the case for metal. Tip number seven, use slow speeds for drilling metal. Carpenters don't work with metal as much as welders or plumbers, but it does come up. And the key to drilling metal is using slow speeds and pressure. I know, I just said don't use too much force, but when drilling metal, it does make a difference. Metal wants to carve away in cleaner scoops than wood. Sometimes it comes out in long curly cues or just little chips. If your bit is spinning too fast, it won't really be able to dig in and start scooping. It'll just skip over the surface, quickly heating up and dulling itself, doing no good. Slow your speed down drastically, and use as much pressure as you think the bit will take without breaking. The cutting tip will slowly dig in and begin gouging out material. You'll see a cone-shaped depression forming. Drill until you punch through, and then consider letting your bit cool down between rounds of drilling. Moving on, I frequently get asked, how big should my drill bit be compared to my fastener? There are charts out there that determine this, but Who's going to stop what they're doing to look up some engineering chart? Here's a quicker, more convenient trick for deciding what bit diameter you should be using. Tip number eight, the eyeball method. 
take one of the fasteners you have to drive and hold it out in front of you, preferably up against a light covered surface to create more contrast. Now take a bit and hold it closely in front of the screw so they're basically touching and in line with each other. Ideally, you want the drill bit to hide the shaft of the screw but not the threads. See the threads are the cutting agent for the screw and they carve the channels that will hold the screw in place. So you want the hole to be about as wide as the shaft of the screw but narrower than the threads. Also remember that hardwoods, like walnut, will require a slight overcompensation because they're so much denser. You may want to cheat up to a slightly larger bit size to remove just a little more wood. Now if you don't have a larger bit, the next trick might come in handy. Tip number 9. Hogging out material. Hogging out is another construction phrase that generally means removing more material by aggressive reaming. For example, say a fastener doesn't want to fit into a pre-drilled hole, but you don't have the next size up drill bit. You can sometimes get away with running the same drill bit through the hole several times, slightly enlarging it in the process. You just keep the bit spinning, working it forward and backward, making sure it contacts the walls of the hole. But try not to angle the bit too much, because this can deform the hole drastically. And before you remove too much material, test the fastener to see if the fit is improved. It's very easy to overdo things this way, but hogging out is a common technique used on job sites for widening holes on short notice, and that includes in wood, concrete, metal, and even plastic. Tip number 10, toenail drilling. Toenailing is just driving a fastener at an angle, but drilling at an angle can be tricky because the drill bit wants to run around everywhere. Again, that's just the rotary action of the tool at work. So how can you drill at an angle easily? Start by standing the tool up and drilling vertically at first. This lets the drill bit bite into the material and get set. When the tip is just slightly embedded, you can now tilt the tool down and drive at an angle. You can carry out this tilt either when the drill is running or when it's at a stop. But make sure you don't break your bit in the process if it's already too deep. I usually keep the drill running so it can cut its new channel by adjustment. And finally, one last tape trick. Tip number 11, use tape as a depth marker. This tip is really important when you don't want to punch all the way through the material you're drilling. For instance, if you want to put a screw in the underside of a nice slab, you want to pre-drill enough for the screw depth, but no more. So try this. Set the fastener up against the drill bit with the head resting on the tip. Now take a narrow piece of painter's tape and round, wrap it around the drill bit where the fastener stops. I even leave mine a tiny bit shy of that mark. This way when you're drilling, the tape will give you an exact indication of the depth you need. And because I left that little hairline gap, I know not to touch the tape to the surface, but just to get it really close. This preserves the tape for more drilling. You can also hold the drill bit up against the edge of the material you're going to drill. You can set your stopping point based on the material's thickness. This accomplishes pretty much the same thing. That's it, 11 drilling tips and some mistakes to avoid. I hope the video was helpful. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments. Or do you know anything I missed? Let me hear it. I love getting tips from my audience. As always, thanks for watching everybody. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter, and I'll see you next time.